everybody. Uh, so we just had our first resin spill on our Form 3. Um, it was a little inevitable. We are always pushing tank lifetimes. We had a bit of a spill with Rigid 4K, but it wasn't catastrophic, thankfully. We've already kind of disassembled most of the machine. You can see it's lying on this table here. We've got the parts over there. Uh, but in the middle of doing this, I thought it would be good to shoot a video in case this might help somebody else um, who's also encountering resin spill and wants to kind of disassemble it and do a bit of a more thorough cleanup job. What Formlabs recommends is to just take the display off and then put it flat on its face and just let the resin drain out. But, you know, we wanted to do a bit of a better job making sure all the resin's out. It's also an opportunity for us to geek out on all the electronics and system engineering inside. So, whatever. <laughs> so this is the machine. Uh, it's lying flat on its face. I've already taken off the bottom, taken off the back, the side panels. You can see here, this is the back. That's the display, the front, and then the two side panels over there. Uh, and then this is the bottom that catches all the resin. So we've already cleaned it up as best as we can. There was a lot of resin just hanging out in these pockets. Uh, we've cleaned it out adequately. Like it's not perfect, but it is what it is. It's very hard to clean because of these ribs and because of the hexagons. Uh, they obviously do that just for stiffness of this part, but I do wish that Formlabs kind of thought about this a bit more in the design because A, you have to remove so many parts just to take that bottom piece off, and then B, once you take that bottom piece off, it's really hard to clean because of all these ribs. So it would have been nice if they had thought about it, if they had something like a removable tray that you can just slide out and clean it um, without having to like flip and disassemble the machine, but it is what it is. Uh, they probably just, it was probably just an oversight from the design team. Bill happens, but you know, we've been really lucky, knock on wood. Uh, this is the first bill that we've had and we kind of always push our tanks past the boundaries. So thankfully the last one or one of very few that we'll ever have. Um, so because this is already mostly disassembled, I'll just explain how you, like the order in which you need to disassemble this. Um, so the front display, it can just be taken off without disassembling anything else. There's just three screws on the bottom. Formlabs explains that. Uh, if you wanna take this back piece off and that bottom piece, you actually need to take the side panels off first. So those slide out first. Then you can take this guy off. Once this is off, then you can take that bottom piece off. Now you can't really do this out of order. You have to do the side panels, the back cover, and then the bottom. Um, and then you basically have an opportunity to clean the bottom, put the bottom back on, put this back cover back on, and then the side panels, and then you're good to go. So the bottom base does have a bunch of connectors because it's got a fan, it's got a buzzer mounted to it. It has the Ethernet USB module and the power cable. So just be careful when disassembling and reassembling it. Basically, these, these two cables plug into that main board here. Same with the Flatflex cable. The black and red is for the fan. The black is for the buzzer. Um, this is for the Ethernet and USB module. Uh, we found the easiest way to unplug the power is basically to pull out the ground plug from the power module and then and then pull out this guy which plugs into the main power supply. So I'll put it back the same way uh, and then I'll show you guys the back and the side panels. So once the bottom's back, we can put the rear panel back on. There's two screws here. Uh, and then there are actually two screws around where the hinge of the front cover is as well. So we'll have to flip that back up and then put those two screws back on.
So now that the rear cover is reattached, we can put those side panels back onto here. So these side panels are kind of interesting. Uh, they have a masked off portion that plugs into this EMI foam just to shield the outer case. And then it's got these like, it's got these like welded, maybe they're, maybe they're press fit, hard to tell, but welded or press fit little posts that slide into here. So when you put this on, it actually needs to go this way and then you have to slide it up and then it just uh, threads in with two screws, one up there and one at the bottom. So now that the side panels are back on, we will just put the display back. It's just a connector. And then I think just these three screws here and that's it. 